The topic of today's web conference is how families, schools, and communities are reshaping family engagement to reach all learners. During today's conversation, we'll be building on the ideas embedded in recent issues of our fine newsletter and in our other interactive events. In this work, we've been exploring family engagement in Anywhere, Anytime Learning, an approach that highlights the idea that families and educators, along with staff from schools and community organizations, play important roles in supporting children's interests and creating pathways for learning across the day, throughout the year, and in multiple settings. Today, you'll be hearing from HFRP senior consultant, Margaret Kaff, about the importance of families, schools, and communities sharing responsibility for children's learning, ensuring that family engagement happens across a variety of settings, not just in schools, and how family engagement matters for children's development from birth through adolescence. These are the key principles of family engagement. We'll also focus in on how one particular point in development, the transition to school, marks a particularly important time for family engagement. Margaret will be talking with Betsy Nikolchev and Carmen Ponce to find out how their program, Stretch to Kindergarten, puts the key principles of family engagement into action. I'll now hand the virtual mic over to Margaret. Thanks, Christine, and thanks to everyone for joining us. Um, so I've just launched a quick poll to get a sense of um, who's with us today. So whether you're a researcher, practitioner, or policymaker, we're interested in knowing um, the age range of the children of the families you work with. So please pick the option that best applies to you and your work. That's great. So it looks like we have a good mix of people on today's conference. Um, so I'd like to start with painting some broad strokes on how family engagement matters. First and foremost, the we know that children benefit from family engagement for a host of outcomes, all the way from early childhood through high school. We also know that families themselves benefit from being engaged. They enjoy less stress, develop larger social networks, and often create more supportive home environments. Finally, we know that early childhood programs and schools themselves benefit from family engagement. Strong family engagement is related to improved school climate, closeness between teachers and children, and, can, and it can be a cost-saving strategy. So the findings that I've just described align with a key tenet of the Harvard Family Research Project, namely that while, student, while schools are important, as you see on the visual on the screen, Schools alone cannot meet students' needs, especially those who are most at risk for school failure. Students need the benefits of what we are referring to as an anywhere, anytime learning approach, in which an array of school and non-school supports, like after-school programs, early childhood programs, and families complement one another to boost up children's learning, build healthy homes, and support quality schools. So for the remainder of the mini presentation, I'd like for us to think about what research says are the most effective principles of family engagement that support anywhere, anytime learning. And the principles that I'm going to discuss are based on the expanded definition of family engagement developed by the National Family, School, and Community Engagement Working Group, which HFRP was a key partner of. So let's jump right in. Principle one is that family engagement is a shared responsibility among families, schools, and communities to support children's learning. So what does that mean? Research shows that too often schools and early childhood programs see family engagement as the responsibility of parents to carry out school mandates, or families think that family engagement is time that they need to spend volunteering or participating in parent-teacher conferences or helping children at home with homework. It's not that these things are not important, but what research shows is most effective is when schools and communities offer families opportunities to support and enrich their children's learning in ways that make sense for fa a family. And schools and communities also communicate with families upfront and in ongoing ways about mutually agreed upon and co-constructed roles. So family engagement 
as so family engagement as a shared responsibility can take many forms from sharing data about children's progress to joint decision making about school efforts to conducting home visits but what's important is that engagement is a process not just a one-time event but it's a relationship that grows over time defined by the interests and desires of those involved and if you look closely at the definition you're reminded that the goal and the purpose of this shared responsibility is to support children's learning. So we're talking about supporting learning so that children can thrive, um, not just academically, but as a whole child. So this means cultivating children's motivation, self-confidence, and interest in learning new ideas. So right now I'm going to play a short two-minute video clip that describes how one teacher shares responsibility with families for children's learning by communicating with families using a web-based platform. The families really love seeing what their students are doing. I love sharing documentation with the families to show them this is where your student was and this is where they are now and look at where we're going to try and take them. And so we do that in several different ways. We share our documentation through a free website through Shutterfly. And the families really love it. And it's very simple and easy to use. And it's not very time consuming on my part at all. On this homepage, we have class news and updates. I can upload files. These are some of the kids' favorite songs that they love to sing and that families might want to sing at home with them. Here's the news and things like that. It gives you upcoming events. And then we have recent activities so the parents can go on here and know, oh, this video is added, this video is added. They can see pictures and videos. And here we have just regular everyday things. We made Play-Doh the other day and I took some pictures of the kids playing with the Play-Doh and I gave the parents kind of a quick synopsis of what we did and how they can do it at home if they want to. We went to the Museum of Nature and Science. I've uploaded videos for the parents to see of fun things that the kids have done that really demonstrate what they're learning. For example, here's one of two students who used a piece of styrofoam to make a car. So they're really using their imagination. It's just a minute and 35 seconds. It's nothing long, but you can really see that the students are using everyday material to make something else, which is one of the TS Gold objectives. And from here, if the parents want to, they can save this video and they have it for their records. So let's take a moment to reflect on what you've heard so far. How would you in your work rate your efforts to share responsibility with families to support children's learning? So that's great. It looks like a lot of us are above average. So let's move on to principle two is that family engagement takes place anywhere children learn. We know that there's a common view that learning happens only in schools. But in reality, we know that children spend only 20% of their yearly waking hours in school settings. This leaves spaces like after school programs, museums, and libraries as critical learning spaces. And even more, we know that children are spending increasing numbers of hours using online and digital media tools, making it such that learning is completely unbounded by time and space. So together, these developments mean that our view of family engagement to promote children's learning and healthy development have to keep pace with a changing environment. So it's no longer accurate to focus on family engagement only with schools. We must consider it across all settings. And as you can see on this visual, um, families, schools, and communities need to come together to support children's learning in a variety of spaces, connect children and youth to these environments, and create continuous pathways across these settings. We also know, however, that there are inequities in access to out-of-school learning opportunities between children from low-income and upper-income households. So programs often just don't exist, and when they do, they are often financially out of reach for many students and families. And we'll be talking in a few moments with one program that works to overcome these inequities.
And you can also read more about policy and pro policies and programs that do this in our series of resources available on the HFRP website. So let's take a quick poll, because we're interested to find out um, where those of you who are on the line and what settings you engage families. And feel free to pick as many as apply to you. That's great. We have a really exciting group on the line today. So the third and final principle of the expanded definition of family engagement is that family engagement is continuous. And to illustrate what this looks like, I'm going to tell you the story of Marcus and his mother Maria. And one of the things that we like to do at HFRP is talk with families, schools, and organizations around the country to understand what's working and to raise up promising family engagement practices. And this story that I'm going to tell you comes from one of those conversations. And just a note, we're also interested in hearing about your stories. Um, and at the end of the conference, we're going to share ways that you can do this. Um, so when Marcus turned three years old, he started attending Head Start at the local public school. And while he was there, his mother Maria was encouraged to volunteer, and she learned strategies to help him read at home. And she even became involved in program leadership. And when it was time to move to kindergarten, the Head Start teachers introduced Marcus and his mother to his new teacher. And together, this group of adults talked with each other about what to expect in kindergarten, about Marcus's strengths and his opportunities for growth, and about making a smooth transition to kindergarten. Now, Marcus progressed through elementary school. And while there, a number of teachers recognized his talent for music and mentioned it to his mother, who signed him up for the church choir. And his third grade teacher even helped him find an after school program that taught music and helped students to use computers to write songs. And through the after school program, Marcus also discovered a love for reading. And his grades improved. And today, Marcus is in eighth grade. And he plans to attend college and hopes to become a music professor. And Marcus and Maria recently attended a college night co-sponsored by his middle school, nearby universities, and the local YMCA. And next summer, he's hoping to take some tours of nearby universities. So Marcus and Maria's story illustrates a lot of points, especially that even though family engagement takes different forms as children get older, it still remains a critical learning support. So in this story, when Marcus is young, Maria is involved by reading to him at home. And as he gets older, she is engaged by connecting him to different resources in the community. And as he enters high school, she's even more engaged by setting high expectations for his future education. And this continuous and constant engagement, regardless of its form, creates a family engagement pathway that we know has impact, impacts on children's outcomes over time. And wrapped into the notion of family engagement being continuous from birth through adulthood is this concept of transition. So think of the story of Marcus and Maria. A critical period is when Head Start teachers sat down with the kindergarten teachers and talked with Marcus and his mother about his strengths and his opportunities. And they all sat down together. And transition points are critical to maintaining and building on family engagement attitudes and practices developed in earlier periods of development. Because it's during these transition points that family engagement trajectories can be maintained and bolstered. But in fact, what's even more interesting is that transition to kindergarten is actually one place where we see all three principles of family engagement come to life. So in line with principle one, when done well, transition to kindergarten is a shared responsibility among families, schools, and early childhood programs and communities. And in, line with, and in line with principle two, during transition, children are naturally moving to different learning settings. Um, and children and families are not only moving from home and early childhood spaces um, to school settings, but also becoming more involved in other places in the community, like after school programs. And as I described earlier, in line with principle three, transitions are the natural bridging points in which families need support and encouragement to maintain and transform their engagement practices.
So I'm really excited because in a few moments, I'll be having a conversation with Betsy and Carmen from the Family Engagement Institute to explore these ideas further. But first, let me hand the microphone back over to Christine, who's going to help us segue to the next portion of our web conference. Thanks, Margaret, for that rich overview of the three principles of family engagement. The next time we hear from Margaret, she'll be joined on screen video, via video feed with Betsy and Carmen. Betsy and Carmen will be joining us from their offices at Family Engagement Institute's Stretch to Kindergarten program, where they serve as Executive Director and Director of Early Learning Programs, respectively. They will be talking to us about how their program addresses the three principles of family engagement within the context of the transition to kindergarten. Before we turn on the video feed, I want to give you some background information about Family Engagement Institute, which I'll refer to in shorthand as FEI moving forward. Founded in 2010, FEI is a grant-funded organization that works in partnership with Foothill College in Northern California to provide educational opportunities that increase family engagement and leadership for parents, educators, and the community. FEI runs a variety of programs, but one that we'd like to highlight today is Stretch to Kindergarten. Stretch to Kindergarten is a tuition-free kindergarten readiness program for families and children with little prior preschool experience. Together with their families, children who take part in Stretch to Kindergarten participate in a series of four Saturday morning early childhood experiences. These experiences are meant to expose children to the look and feel of early childhood classrooms. Over the summer, children attend a six-week, full-day kindergarten program run in a typical classroom setting. This program is co-taught by pre-K and K teaching teams. For families, the program offers parenting workshops, leadership opportunities, and chances to get involved in children's learning in the program, school, and in the community. Because Stretch to Kindergarten is run by FEI, which is at Foothill College, all families are enrolled as community college students under the college's non-credit parenting division. This student status allows families to use any of the available resources at either the main Foothill College campus or their satellite campus. In this way, FEI serves as a college bridge program where families build the skills tools and confidence to successfully navigate educational systems, promote a college-going identity, and continue to enroll in additional community college classes. Classrooms are run by pre-K and K teams. In this way, the program offers an opportunity for teachers to develop their practice by working with the team across different developmental periods. A recent external evaluation of the initiative showed overall that all or almost all parents learned more about how to help their child and why they need to support their child's education. And all or almost all parents agreed or strongly agreed that they are now confident that they can help support their child to succeed in school and they can communicate with their child's teacher. We'll now join Maggie. Betsy and Carmen on camera for a conversation illustrating the three principles of family engagement. As questions arise for you as you listen to this conversation, please send them in to us via the chat box. Thank mm -hmm. you. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you today. I'm going to wait for Betsy and Carmen to join us. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Betsy and Carmen. Thank you for being here. And thank you, everyone, for your patience um, with some of our technical glitches. But um, this, I'm, I'm really excited to have the two of you here today because I just always enjoy hearing about your programming and the work that you do. And I think this is going to be a great opportunity for those of you in the field um, to really find out more ideas on how to bring the principles of family engagement um, alive to life. 
So let's jump right in. So Betsy and Carmen, maybe you could start with a few examples of how Stretch to Kindergarten um, sort of, um, maybe give a few examples of how Stretch to Kindergarten shares responsibility um, with families for children's learning. Well, thank you for having us. We're so happy to be here from Foothill College. Um, so yeah, so this is a this is a big tenant of everything we do, that shared responsibility. And one of the very, very special things that we support is the dual generational model where families and children are learning together. Um, we also believe in that dual capacity model where our professionals and our families are a part of a learning community. So again, enforcing, reinforcing that shared responsibility. Part of our framework is around building that success, supporting the child and the youth uh, with their well-being, their academic uh, achievements. And through that, it really is the adults supporting that success through building their awareness, their knowledge, their skills around family engagement. We really focus in five specific areas. One would be child development and readiness. Another is family strengths, which is culture and values, communication, connection, leadership and advocacy, and of course a commitment to lifelong learning. We are all continuously growing. So to answer your question, there are some specific ways that STK share responsibility with the parents. First, at the start of the program, we do the intake conference that we call Families and Teacher in Dialogue. Uh, we send a message that we're going to work together, we're going to do this together. So the purpose of this uh, interview is that families share about their children, about their talents, interests, about their favorite family activity, routines, expectations, maybe and some um, challenges that parents have at home as well. So uh, they, it will help us to, to be, uh, start building relationships and uh, promote the homeschool connection. We share, they share about the culture, traditions, that is really good for the teachers and the program to know. And also we conduct the exit conference with the parents as well, and we also provide opportunities for uh, continuous and open communication throughout the program. Second, we, do, we particularly pay attention to the uh, language development. Most of our families uh, have a Spanish as a home language. So we use some strategies, like a poll strategies. Uh, we have the uh, uh, guidance of uh, Dr. Carola Matera. And uh, we use a personal oral language strategies that support also the dual language learners and also includes the dialogic reading. Uh, and strategy that they can do, parents can do at home to we promote that dialogue and conversation in the home language. Third, we employ the home-based approach learning, which promotes the parent and community involvement. This makes the learning meaningful for the students. And also with the message of the day, they, it's a daily question or a statement that is posted outside and inside the classroom and, and representing all the home la and the languages in the classroom, where the uh, parents know what is going on at school, they can talk with the children, and the children can uh, receive the same message from the school and the family. We also collect family stories. We want to know what the parents want to know, what the parents' interests uh, are. And also, we promote the parent participation before, during, and after the program. And we invite the parents to shape the program and participate in the family workshops. Also, we share uh, data assessments. Parents are uh, receiving information. And, 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 and daily basis, I would say, and they are familiar with assessment tools that we use at a That's great. And one of the things that I know about your program um, from previous conversations we've had is this focus that you have on um, professional development. Um, so maybe you could share a little bit about how your professional development model also um, promotes a shared responsibility for children's learning. Yeah, so it's very important for us that families and teachers who are critical in the lives of children are exposed to the same information where, you know, uh, talking about shared curriculum, we're talking about all of these concepts that we want to have that shared language around. 
So we really do invest in that co-learning experience. Part of that is the professional development that we do with our teachers. And that is to share engagement strategies. We want to make sure that the assessments are, again, as Carmen mentioned, the, the critical piece around shared data. How do we share assessment information with families? We also are very much around that reflective and responsive and supportive teaching model. So we provide coaching. Mm -hmm. We believe in collaborative mm -hmm. teaching time where teachers support each other in shared ideas and also the family feedback loop. We want to make sure that families have input, that they can help shape the program. And so we are constantly actually setting aside time, allowing that time and space for those things to happen. That's great. That's great. Um, so in line with principle two, that, you know, that family engagement takes place across different settings, um, what are some of the spaces in which you engage families? <laughs> It's okay, uh, promote family engagement by connecting uh, the families with community and educational resources. For example, here in California, we connect the families with CERSPAG, we work with the Healthy Activities Foundation, or we connect families with, for example, health uh, uh, services. Uh, we help them to apply for the insurance, and also we connect uh, vision and data screening for all our children. And also, um, like we said before, we um, and connect the families with Foothill College. They become Foothill College students and they're not credit classes. We go on field trips to library, the library, and we have a great partnership with the library. All our families get a library card. So 100% of our SDK families get a library card, and we use the library, we visit the library, and uh, also we uh, go to local parks, museums, uh, family resource centers, and uh, places that they don't require money because they are, are public access. And families, they learn that they, those resources are part of the community. And also families share places they know about. Um, another way that we do is, again, the message of the day. We send a weekly calendar to uh, the families uh, where we uh, suggest some activities that they can do at home. And we send book bags. This promotes a rich conversation between parents and children. We also develop the kinder kits, which uh, we send at home. Uh, little uh, acti uh, some activities that support uh, science, literacy, math. For example, in math, we send games. We send uh, uh, ideas mm -hmm. of what parents can do. Math is fun, and it can happen inside, outside uh, the classroom, at, inside a, outside a, a house. And also, we provide studies and tools so the parents can start using mathematical vocabulary, and, and the children are excited about that. And uh, also, we when I get some books so they can start building their book, uh, home library. That's great. Um, and, it, you know, your program inherently promotes this um, transition, the transition points, and it inherently promotes as a transition to kindergarten um, a developmental continuum. So maybe you could talk a little bit more about that specific aspect of your work, but also how your uh, how stretch to kindergarten in a sense creates um, a continuous pathway for families to be engaged over children's development. Yeah, as you, you say in your presentation, FEI sees the transitions as critical opportunities to provide quality learning experience and support. So there's two big transitions that happen at SDK. The big, uh, the first one is that, as you say, most of the children did not have preschool experience and the families as well. So what we do, uh, our transition is start in uh, the spring, in early uh, April, and the parents and children come together for four Saturdays. They meet the teachers, they meet their friends, we start building community. So this is a big piece of uh, the summer program. After the, we talk with parents, they say that transition, that transition or that time during the spring program was crucial. You know, we know what's going on, we are familiar with the routine, we know the teachers, we know the other parents. So this is um, and the big transition that you know, we will say that, uh, at the beginning of the program. And then, of course, the transition to kindergarten. We provide the parents with the resources, the tools about routines, uh, talking about transitions, well, how we can make it 
uh, smooth, you know, because parents and children is for as well. The other thing that's big for us, especially being placed in a, in having the opportunity of being a part of a college, we really do embrace that cradle to career concept. And again, we talked about the multi-generational approach. So we're serving young children, we're serving youth in the community, we are serving parents, grandparents, mm -hmm. and we, we do have that continuous pathway. We have wonderful youth interns in our programs that are part of our community, part of the community that the families and children come from. We um, partner, FEI partners, not only through their Stretch to Kindergarten programs, but through other programs with our local Head Starts, our um, state preschools, our elementary schools, our middle schools, our high schools and then all the way into college where we're supporting first generation students who are taking that huge transition into, um, into college. So for that, we really do cross over that continuum, that developmental continuum. And our partnerships are long lasting. We are there for <laughs> for a long time. We're not just there for the four Saturdays and the six weeks, but it continues. It's really great. And, you know, I think, I think my last question is, you know, I listen to you talk and it just is parent leadership just seems to be so foundational um, to what you're doing. So maybe you can give some examples of how your program really specifically promotes parents as leaders. Well, First of all, it's so important for us building capacity and really highlighting the strengths that everybody brings to the table. And leadership is huge, whether it be leadership in your family, leadership in the classroom, leadership in your community. So we have multiple opportunities, but one of our models that has been very successful is we have uh, family engagement coordinators who go out and work with other families to connect them to our programs, to connect them to other opportunities that are happening in the community or through the college. And we build that, we start that in Stretch to Kindergarten where we have families who are part of um, a leadership group that are then going to be that bridge as the, as the families continue into their feeder kindergarten schools and to keep that group connected and, and grow more leadership. And Carmen, I know that you've done some great projects yeah. with that. With a, from day one, we recognize parents as leaders, leaders at home, leaders at the school. After we do the intake conference, like we say, you know, we gather information of parents' talents, strengths, and and interest. So when the parents start leading a small group activities, we recognize them as leaders, we empower the parents, and also they start uh, building relationships with other parents and they create, uh, uh, they organize different events and activities, and we appreciate every effort. You know, well, for example, they generate a list of different options of how parents can be involved. That list comes from the parents, so it's great because parents know what the other parents are facing, the challenges, their, uh, their let's say, you know, work, schedule, time. So we provide, uh, we create a list of opportunities for parents to be involved. They also look for ways to share information regarding community events, cu uh, cultural uh, festivals, speakers, concerts, and other ways to meet other families in the community. They get together and they start organizing their own events. At the end of the program, the family engagement coordinators at SDK have created an SDK directory. They feel that it's important to stay connected, and, uh, and they put together a directory, and they list the principal names, the INLAC, DLAC web, and way that they can be uh, connected in, in kindergarten and beyond. These families stay engaged throughout the, you know, fifth, for, for fifth grade, middle school, and high school. We still see these families. And I just wanted to add one thing. Um, our stretch of kindergarten is very project-based, 
And so there's so many opportunities in the classroom. Um, and when we say classroom, of course, it's an indoor-outdoor experience. But but for for the that leadership to um, emerge. So for instance, we were talking about building structures. We had a, a father who was actually in construction. He came into the classroom. He did this whole wonderful um, couple of days where they did blueprints. They created these buildings. We had another father who was working as a chef in a pizza restaurant. He came in and did a whole thing. So there's that's leadership to us, um, being able to, you know, again, create that learning environment and and really be be central to to what kids are experiencing. And it and it's such a wonderful experience for kids to to see their parents in that role too. And it and it really supports teachers. It's 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 a great great win win. No, I appreciate your sharing that. And you know, as you're talking, I'm thinking about Louise Mole's work and funds of knowledge. So it's just it's really exciting. I am getting a huge nudge from Christine because she's telling me that there are a lot of great questions coming through in the chat box. So I'm going to take us off screen. Um, and Christine's going to start lobbing us some questions that have been coming in from um, the audience out there. So um, thank you. And to our next screen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As Margaret mentioned, we're going to now move to the Q&A component of our session. And I invite everyone to continue using the chat box to ask, ask questions of our panelists. And we'll give everyone a, a few more seconds to pose those questions. And while you are submitting questions, I want to make two notes. We've been getting um, a few questions about an archive and if this presentation will be available after today's session ends. It will be. An archive of the webinar will be posted on hfrp.org next week. And I also wanted to make a note of one more thing. Um, after the Q&A session, and again at the end of the web conference, we'll be sharing a link to a survey. We'd love your feedback on today's event so that we can use it to inform future web conferences. So the first question that I'll ask will be to the entire group, to Margaret and Betsy and Carmen. What are some recommendations that you all have for engaging busy families? Uh, well, this is Betsy, so I'll, I'll, I'll start with that. I think you have to meet families exactly where they are. So you have to be flexible. You have to be responsive. So if families are available when they bring children to school, that's a connecting point. If they're available in the evening, that's a connecting point. Perhaps they would like to participate and, and be a part of something that's going on in the weekend. And, or perhaps they would like to do something in the evening on their own. But there is always, always a way. And I think that we should not be afraid to sit down with families and ask them what works the best for you. This is a partnership, and we need you there. I think that's right. And our recent um, fine newsletter um, just actually tackled this issue of time. Um, looking at the different space, uh, the different um, times in which families and children engage with one another, and the types of activities they're engaged in during those times, but also um, how organizations and institutions can come together and think about um, creating um, programming that really meets families' busy schedules. So. Um, you know, things that, you know, we write about, and you can see this in um, our recent fine commentary, are, you know, having flexible sign-ups, um, having on-demand resources, um, and just really thinking about all those places where children are and making, you know, sign-up um, accessible and easy for parents to do.
Great, thank you. And Betsy and Carmen, a, a few questions have come in about how, if at all, you collect data on children and families after they leave the program. So do you have um, both questions are coming in both about longitudinal data that you have or immediate data that you have on children and families um, as they move to kindergarten. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, part of this is a is a partnership. Again, it's that continuum. So we are we are serving our local school districts, and we are working with an external evaluator. And so we want to set set that structure up from the beginning, where we can track track students, track uh, not only how they how they did, you know, from the beginning throughout the SDK program, but also what's happening as they enter kindergarten and beyond. And of course, there's multiple factors that come into play that, so we know that, that our STK kids do fantastic in kindergarten. And we've, I mean, we have, we have great data, but we also have anecdotal feedback from teachers, kindergarten teachers, who are you know, love receiving the SDK kids and the SDK families because there's a level of confidence now for families to engage, to communicate, to reach out, to connect with teachers. Once we get beyond, we have some challenges in in tracking the longitudinal because every district has different um, data points, and they're also changing, especially with the Common Core, that the assessments are changing. And there's other influences. But we also continue with our FEI programs with families who have started out with STK. So we, we, can, we can track uh, their engagement as far as, you know, some of, the, some of the things that are very common data points, for instance conferences and um, communication with teachers and things like that. Does that answer your question? <laughs> I think so, yes. And I, I know that you all hinted at this, but several people have also been asking about the leadership opportunities that are available to families. Can you talk more about what those look like and what opportunities families actually take advantage of in the program? Well, uh, and we say before you know, the, uh, we say that parents actually are leaders at home, at the school, and also we connect the families with the, uh, the schools. You know, we invite the principals, they connect with the principals, and most of our parents, I will say, they participate in a PTA meeting, they go to their class uh, reps uh, when they are uh, kids are in kindergarten, and also in community events. We are part of different collaboratives and initiatives, and we bring the parents with us. So to be, it, so we uh, leave that uh, partnership. We uh, show that model. If we want to talk about family engagement, how we want to talk just the teachers and the administrators and the community members if the families are not present. So we invite families to attend this, those meetings with us, with us as well. We also support, um, as they get into the, the elementary school and middle school and, and become ELAC and DLAC leaders, we actually do a leadership institute. And that grows some of the tools and strategies um, to be able to work with other families and leadership. Uh, there's a lot of fabulous things that happen when you're a leader, and there's challenges too. So, so providing, building that community of support amongst each other is really important, and we help facilitate that uh, during the year. Thank you. And Someone asked if um, the Stretch to Kindergarten program has been replicated in other areas in, in California or elsewhere, and if you all know if um, there are plans for 
for programs like this to, to continue to develop out of community college settings? Well, one of the things that we think about a lot, we started our program in Mountain View, and that was our original partnership, which we have continued. The last two years, we've been lucky enough to partner in the Sunnyvale School District, which again is still fairly local. And we're, so we are concentrated mostly in our local Bay Area. So we are working, our organization is relatively young. We've finished, we've completed with Stretch Kindergarten five years and with FEI actually four years. We're relatively young and so the question of scaling is always on our mind and we are working towards that, developing toolkits so that we can expand into other community colleges. And that, that is a, a hope for us. That's great to hear that this can, can potentially move beyond um, a geographical setting. That's fantastic. Um, I know that we have just 